Hey everyone, Steve here. I hope you're doing well. Today is the 5th of May. We move from two kilometer radius to five kilometer radius. Hallelujah. Freedom. Uh, and it's great. And I'm looking forward. I can get to go to the beach now. Uh, so that's really good. But I want to talk about a freedom that we can have in Christ that is always bigger than our worldly circumstances. We go from 2K to 5K today. Brilliant. But there's a freedom we can have in Jesus internally that is much bigger than the freedom we can have in the world. And I want to talk about how we can get there through contemplative disciplines or contemplative spirituality. So we're thinking about Psalm 46 verse 10, which says, be still and know that I am God. It's the idea of being still in the presence of God. And a contemplative prayer or contemplative disciplines are where you say, I want to stop and, and think about what's going on in my heart. And I want to come to God, not because he's useful, but because he's beautiful. Not because I want to get something from God, but because I want to be with God. Not because I want the gifts, but because I want the giver. And I want to slow down and come into the presence of God and bring all of myself into the presence of God and be aware of who I am and aware of who he is and what's going on in me and how he's relating to me in this moment. Contemplative prayer. Be still and know that I am God, Psalm 46, 10 says. Uh, a psalm that is really helpful is Psalm 1 when it comes to contemplative prayer or contemplative disciplines. It contrasts the way of the world with the way of those that are spending time with God. Very famous psalm, and it starts like this. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He's like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. I want to give you three thoughts today that might help you. And uh, you can focus this idea of being still before God and spending time in his presence. First of all, don't get stationary, the psalm says. It talks about those that walk, those that stand, and those that sit. It's going from walking to standing to sitting. Someone who's getting stationary. Uh, in, it's easy at this time of, of, of um, where we're physically stationary to get stationary inside, self-pity, wallowing in, in your own problems and, and losing hope. And, you know, it's easier to start to criticize everyone else and think everyone else has a better life than you and look how hard and woe to me and pity you. Self-pity can quickly come in and with self-pity, sinful behaviors and you become stationary. Suddenly everyone's against you and no one understands you. So someone says, don't start going from walking to standing to sitting. No, no, don't give in to self-pity. The first thing. Uh, the second thing the psalm says is then delight in the law of the Lord, meditate on it. And this is this idea of contemplative prayer. To delight in something is not to rush. To delight in something is not to master it. To delight in something is not just mental understanding of it. It's to enjoy it, to appreciate it, to savor it, to chew on it. And to meditate, not like Eastern meditation, which is to empty the mind, to meditate in the Bible is to fill the mind with truth. Until that truth, do you remember the story of the two disciples on the Emmaus Road with Jesus? Till the truth makes your heart burn. That is contemplative prayer. I take the truth, I meditate, I'm delighting night and day on the word of God until that truth makes my heart burn and there's zeal and there's fire and there's awe and there's wonder and there's a sense of the presence of God. That's contemplative prayer. We take time to be with God until we sense his presence and the truth goes from our head to our hearts. So don't become stationary, don't wallow in self-pity. Delight, meditate on the law of the Lord, take it in and enjoy it. And then thirdly, it says, you will stay evergreen and stable. It talks about a tree and, and this tree is always bearing fruit, no matter what the season, no matter what's going on outside, the, you know, there's this greenness and it, you know, evergreen trees are evergreen. They, they, all year round, they stay green and they're stable and secure. And, and so there's this idea of these roots that are going down to the waters and they're finding nutrients and they, they're making themselves very stable. 
So as you know, the wind and the wet uh, and the waves, the wind and the heat comes, and there's there's this drought and there's 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 you know intense pressure on the tree. It might bend, but it doesn't break, uh, and it might find it's it's struggling for water, but it can still find the water because the roots are deep. It's talking about our relationship uh, with God. So today, I want you to think about being still and knowing that He is God. Ooh. In one sense, this COVID-19 is is revealing that many people are very rootless. They don't have their roots in something that's deep enough to hold them through a storm and through the heat. And they haven't got the living water feeding them inside as outside is becoming pressured. And as Christians, this is the moment when we say, no, my roots are in Jesus. He is my hope. And I'm going to spend time with him. Uh, And if the world around us is crumbling because the thing, you know, the things of this world that we put our roots in are no longer able to hold us and keep us secure and keep us green. We have our roots deeper in in Jesus. Uh, So it talks about the chaff being blown away. We're not like that because in Jesus we have security. Um, You may say, well, how do I know? The psalm talks about finishing the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. How do I know the Lord is watching over me? You know, there was one man who delighted fully in the law of the Lord and he meditated on it day and night and he faced an intense heat and incredible drought and the storms and the wind came at him intensely on the cross. And he said, I thirst. He he couldn't find the living water. He was cut off. He became like chaff, Jesus, so you could be rooted. He thirsted so you could have your thirst quenched he was in a sense cast out of the assembly of the righteous so you could be brought in he was made stationary literally impaled on a cross he couldn't move he was stationary so you could be brought into the life and the dance and the joy of God there's an internal freedom you can have now in Jesus through Jesus by the spirit as you come to your heavenly father in prayer not because he's useful but because he's beautiful not because you want to get anything from him because you want to be with him. Let us learn contemplative prayer during this time of pressure. Let's have an internal freedom that is far greater than any external freedom we might be enjoying.